Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERW Plans, online erwplans.com, on Etsy, ERW Plans, and on Instagram, ERW underscore plans. Today, I'm going to show you all of the ways I can think of to add more to-do space to your passion planner. Every once in a while, I will be in the passion planner forums and I'll see people complain that there isn't enough to-do space in their passion planner. They're from the bullet journal world, they like the time blocks, but they really wish they could add more to-dos to their days. Well, I'm about to show you how you can add your to-dos to your month, your week, and your day. So let's get started. First, your monthlies. This is the monthly for May. I'm going to show you already I have a to do a great big to-do list space. In addition to the project space over here, which I will often just use as my to-do space. I also have this space over here, which I've put in Chelsea's dot grid bottom space. So adding a to-do here is as simple as make your checkbox and then add your to-do item one. For writing on Chelsea's stickers, I find that the um, Pigma Micron pens work the best. They are the least likely to, um, they dry fast, they're the least likely to smear if you close your book too fast or if you're left-handed. Whereas some of the other, even the ballpoints will smear on the sticker paper. So just as a heads up, that's what I find. Now, that's not the only way to add to-do items to your monthly. You also have this option over here in the um, bar area this here. If you're using a sticker kit like this, you can put your to-dos here, grouped by, let's say, projects, four projects here, four to-do list spaces here. Or you have the option of adding in a sticker like this from Chelsea where it's once again a dot grid, so you can just peel this off. It will cover this space very nicely. And then you can just write in your to-do list items. But otherwise, let's say project one, and then your to-do list item. But what if that's still not enough space for you? Never fear. You can go to the Passion Planner website and download for free these dot grid pages. You want the B5 size because that's the size of your Passion Planner if you're using a Pro. You want the A4 if you're using the Classic or Large, and you want the A5 if you're using the Small or Compact. I've cut out the page, double-sided. I printed it double-sided and cut it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold along this edge here pretty much right by where that first set of dots is will be where my fold goes. Now you have different choices for where you're going to place your new page, full page. You can put it here. You could have printed this on sticker paper and just stickered over your calendar here. But I'm going to go to the monthly reflection section. This is a redated pro if you're wondering why it goes from May to August. And I'm just going to take this area that, has, that I folded and I'm going to go ahead and add some sticky tape to it. In this case, it's the mono permanent adhesive from Tombow, but if you have double-sided stick tape, that'll work just as well. You can also just go down the center here and add your tape directly to the binding. It's going to make my life somewhat easier. Cool, nice and sticky. Then I'm going to make a second fold. So I'm going to stick it to both sides here. So I make my second fold. I'm 
in the same direction as the first fold, just so you know. So it's kind of like folding in on itself, if that makes sense. So you have one fold, two folds. Like that you made a little kind of diamondy thing here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that second fold here right into the spine. And push that first fold down onto the sticky tape that I laid down. Like so. You may find it helpful to have a tool like this. This is just a regular bone scorer. So you can just pop, pop that right in there. And then if you want some extra staying power, you can grab like some washi tape and just washi right there. But now you've added in an entire blank grid page. What you can do with your new grid page that you just added in we can do a running task list for the month. So, since it was May on the other side there. And I have another video where I showed you how to do a running task list. But I'll set one up here as well. Since this is going to be a monthly setup on this one, I'm going to divide it into weeks. So we'll do week one. And then in each little square here, I'm going to do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then my task. Now, I can go, okay, what do I need to do? We need to do grocery shopping. And we need to do, let's see, laundry. And we need to buy more pens. We need to order some stickers. When I complete the task, I can take my little box, color it in. If I start the task, like I started the laundry, I can slash through my little box like this and then color it in when I complete it the next day. If I don't complete my task the first, if I don't even start the task and it moves to the second day, you can do an arrow or whatever your mark system is and then mark it off when I complete it. And if I keep putting it off, I can do a dash that day and a dash that day and just keep doing dashes until I finally complete the task. And then at the end of the week, you could grab a different color. Any task that you didn't complete your first week, let's say make a hair appointment. That you should have done, but you didn't. You're going to start your line wherever. So let's say I realized on Tuesday I should do this, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. It goes all the way to Saturday, and then right down here. I'll make a mark with an arrow showing it's a migrated task. See, this is still Sunday. You can redo your dates if you want here. But I'll just keep going with make hair appointment. You can also use up here to show that it's migrated. This gives me one whole month worth of a running task list. Now that we know how to add more monthly tasks to our planner, let's look at weekly tasks that we can add. There's a few different ways that we can add our weekly tasks to our planner. 
let's start with a fresh week here. Much like we did for the month, we can start our own task list with a dot grid sticker on our taskbar. So if you only have a few to-dos to add, you can just go right here. This is, as I said earlier, from Chelsea Brown. Put in your box or whatever your coding is and make it to-do. Really simple, we've added some task list space. But wait, there's more. You can divide your task list space that already exists. I'm gonna take my ruler and a, pen, a pencil. These squares are about five millimeters and the writing, the total space here is about eight centimeters. So, Four centimeters is about the center, give or take. Right. So I'll put it at two and a half centimeters, or two and a half millimeters rather, and on either side, do a box. Now you can remeasure that at the bottom because remember it takes two points to make a line to map of geometry. Or you can just kind of eyeball it like I'm doing right now. Yeah, that looks like a right angle up here. We'll go with it. Once I know that I've got my lines in mostly the right order, this one's a little wonky. We'll fix that. I can go back in. Once again, I'm using my Pigma Micron. 0.005 and I'm just gonna even those lines out and then I'm gonna go right back in here so we're kind of eyeballing it here Go ahead and actually do the pen to get that in there. Much better. And then we're just going to go ahead and do that on the other side here as well. So just as a review, go to four centimeters and put a mark. And I'll do it at the top as well so we have a better line system than we did last time. centimeters and then we go to two and a half millimeters which is basically centering the five millimeter marks on either side do it again down here connect the dots You don't have to do it with pencil first. I just like to do it with pencil to make sure I didn't totally jack it up like we saw I did on the other side there. Much better. Now there's these tiny little spaces between our boxes there. When I'm doing the pencil, I don't mind so much like just running right through those. Personal preference, however, is that when I'm doing the ink, I'm gonna leave that space as well because if I'm using the 005 micron, like I am, actually so thin that to me at least it just looks like it's part of the page like it's hard for me to tell necessarily that I've drawn it in oops I went through the line that time anyway. and then you can go ahead because the microns dry real fast and erase your pencil lines You've just doubled your bottom to-do list space. 
But wait, what if that's still not enough? Well, we can continue with our stickers. I have Hya. This is the Space of Infinite Possibility cover from Chelsea Brown that's divided up into to-do lists. Another thing you can do is I have the Dutch door task list in my shop. You could take the Dutch door task list from my shop and instead of printing it on plain, plain paper and making a Dutch door, print it on sticker paper and then it matches this and then you can just divide it with the lines again because this is the same four centimeter width. But if you don't feel like being that crafty, you can just get the pre-divided from Chelsea sticker. And now we have so much to-do list space. Look at that, it's crazy. This is so crazy, right guys? Oh my gosh. But wait, we're not done. Don't forget, I mentioned I have the Dutch door page, which puts this task space on back and front flippy pages. <gasps> so exciting. So we're just gonna pop that off the page. Fold the edge. You know I'm obsessed with Dutch doors. So we gotta Dutch door this. Once again, you don't have to use this you kind of glue. You can use uh, Elmer's glue if you like it. You can use, you know, double-sided tape, whatever you like. Pop that guy in there and look at that. <gasps> Even more to-do list space. It is incredible. So much to-do list space. But Elizabeth, that's not enough to-do list space. I hear you say, because I hear you. I do. Well, you want daily tasks. You want to be able to say, I need to do this on this date. Right? Okay. Gotcha. So, this is that same sticker. You can see I've pre cut it from Chelsea Brown that I bought as a uh, PDF download. I printed my task list on the back of her PDF download and printed it on paper, so that regular paper instead of sticker paper. What I can do here is fold the top, like so. Just fold it, I think I'd probably fold it yeah, like right along the black line here, but it's gonna get taped down, so I mean, you know, no worries. We're going to take our glue again. So much gluing tonight. Oh my gosh. And we're going to line these guys up with our day of the week. Push it down. I know we've got this extra guy over here. You can sticker over it, you can color over it. You could cut that sucker off so you just have this bit of space here, however you wanna do it. Doesn't matter to me. But now you can just go ahead and say, okay, here's Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. Look at that, look at that to-do list space. And then we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Flip over my Dutch door here. I just love to do this space. Look at this, it's crazy. Get to the top here. Fold the sucker down. Fold him again. I could use my scoring tool if I wanted to. Glue, or otherwise adhesive. My flippy panel. And then we can just stick 
that sucker. Line them up. Look at that. Oh my god. Wednesday. even if you really wanted to. Go ahead. So much desk space. If you really wanted to, grab your slice tool. I wouldn't use an X-Acto knife. You could. I wouldn't do it though. Don't want to cut the part that's folded. You just want to cut the top part there. So that's why I put that sticker paper. You can even just grab that slice to keep it going. Issues keeping my slice tool straight tonight. You know what that's all about. This would be a case where you've definitely divided up the other side also into your task lists. Then you would have your double task list space over here. And when you flip it up, you could just flip up that day's tasks. It's very exciting. Okay. Cool. But wait, there's more. In addition to having various flippy panels, either for the individual days of the week, or over here, week, I mean, and look at that, that's so much space when you do it that way, it's crazy. When you divide it over here, they line up so well, it's great. We can do other task list space ideas. Move it on back over here. If you don't want to buy a lot of stickers, and I got you, I got you, I feel you. I don't want to necessarily buy a lot of stickers either. It's expensive, I'll tell you that much. I got this from, I think, Joanne Fabrics. I'm not really sure. It was like a couple bucks, just a flimsy piece of plastic, right? But it has these task list buttons or blocks over here. So you can always, of course, draw in your task list space. Uh, take some washi or something, cover up the space of infinite possibility. I try to line up these two to keep them in a straight line. So much more taskless space. And then you can make those as wide or as narrow as you want here. But what if that's still not enough? You still need daily taskless space. Well, I have, these will be in the store as of tomorrow. These are my four hour taskless space sticker blocks. They have a dot grid so that if you want to do your task list space, like a bullet journal, you can. And they come in four hour and eight hour blocks. And they're designed to cover up the timeline here. Then you can go in and there are little dot grid dots here. Your dot. And then it's just like bullet journaling. And it's a five millimeter rule, so these aren't gonna line up exactly with these numbers here. As you can see, this is a little bit bigger. I have bigger handwriting, so I like to have the bigger space. If you don't mind using smaller size spaces, we have other options for you. These are the same as what we were using on this page, except they are cut out for daily use, they fit half of your page. So you just go in here and they go halfway up the page here. So there's your tasks. And then as I mentioned in another video, you could use this up here to redate 
or retime those so you'll just have it where you have the times that like you're at work or the times you're at, you have business or the times you're not at work and have business and then you'd have that task list for the day. Chelsea also has smaller task lists. The, this came from the January weekly kit I think. So if you want to start your month your day off with your to-do list you can start your day with the to-do list here. You also have the option if you want to use the full day because I definitely see a lot of people posting on the forum saying oh but I don't use this to keep track of appointments. I work a nine to five job and then come home and take care of my family or I'm a stay at home mom. Chelsea has you covered there. We have these timeline covers that are check boxes. So you can go ahead, sticker these in. Just cover your timeline up completely. And those actually will, unlike mine, which I made bigger because I have big handwriting, these actually match the lines here. So you can use your regular lines to be like that task list item, other to do, etc. But what if you need to use every hour of these hours, but you still want daily to do task lists? Fear not, I have you covered. New in the shop, our weekly add-in page for weekly and daily tasks. I'm real excited about this, this is great. I've cut it out already, so it's into the pro size, okay? Like everything else, I'm gonna fold along the line here that I very helpfully put on this page for you. So you just fold along my little gray line here. So excited about this. This is for a Monday start. I have a Sunday start that I'm looking at right now. There will be a Sunday start and a Monday start in the shop. Make sure you get the right one. Okay, just make sure you do that right. And we're gonna taper in. I do it this way because it's more controlled this way. The tape is too wide. And then I have a lot of extra stickiness and things, pages get stuck together, there's mucho sadness. It's just easier and I get more control out of doing it this way, but do whatever way you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna put that right into the seam of the planner, we always do. And then we've got our scoring tool. So you don't want to buy a lot of stickers. Use your highlighter. Highlight here to kind of color block it out. And then you can go in and do your task one, task two, maybe task two is you have a big description on. It's that big thing. then you can just skip a line and go to the next one. This gives you a bit more flexibility than the stickers that we have over here, while still sorting your tasks from your timeline. You also have the option, there are a bunch of different companies that do washi tape. This is from BMG, I bought it off of Jet Pens. We could go over here, and just stick her down over top with the washi. The big thing to keep in mind with the washi is that it's a sticky paper, so it's very clear. So my recommendation to you would be to fill it in with color like we did over here, and then just use the tape. Putting down some color first, it helps keep the numbers underneath 
from kind of confusing that box there. It's still not the best. You could also get some white washi tape and washi out the numbers completely and then do your check boxes. Or you could even just move your check boxes over here to the side of the blue line to make them stand out more. There are also other options if you wanted to get really creative with this. Once again, white washi here, drawing your own check boxes is an option. So, is there any other way that we can add task list space to our planner? Yes. We're gonna get a little bit creative here. I've got, I got these from JetPans. It is a to-do list that basically fits the same length of space here. It's just a little bit wider than normal. And it's sticky. So you can peel these off. These go great in your pocket of your passion planner. They're the perfect width for the classic, for the compact, for the, which is the large. For the pro, they're a little wide. If that doesn't bother you, you can just use your task list like that. If it does bother you, you can grab your slice tool and just slice off the excess. There. Task list that fits my passion planner. The nice thing about this is If you need to take it, your passion planner somewhere, this can be removed as well. If you don't want to haul your whole passion planner into the grocery store, for example. The last thing I have is something else that will be coming to the shop soon. It is a laminated bookmark. On one side, I have my key with my color coding and how I have my task started, task completed, task canceled, task continued, bullet journal key. On the other side for my personal one, I have my social media plan for the day. This um, pen that I'm using here is a dry erase uh, fine and medium side pen from jet pens that I got. But this will actually have this task list to do space on the back of it in, when it's in the shop. It will come in three sizes for the pro, the compact and the classic, and it is a physical product. So the great thing about having a laminated to-do sheet is that you can write right on it. For example, today I'm posting on Facebook about adding to-do space. You can check off your tasks. Then when you're all done, you can wipe it away. This is a wet erase marker. So running my finger over it only slightly smears it. I can put it into my planner, walk around with my planner for a while, open the planner up, and there's no transfer onto the other page. In order to get it off, I'm gonna have to wet this and then wipe it away. a spray bottle of well, lens cleaner is always a good thing. So that, my friends, 
is every way I can think of to add more task list and to do space to your passion planner. If you can think of something that I haven't put here, please leave it in the comments. I would love to hear how you're adding even more to-do list space to your passion planner. Till next week, this is Elizabeth, ERW underscore plans on Instagram and ERWplans.com. Thanks guys.